Justin came up here with like a physical Bible. And I just want to level set that I am a grace Christian and not a truth Christian. So every single Bible verse that's in this presentation was Googled. Um, so I, <laughs> I pray that you will see God in me <laughs> as we go through this presentation. <laughs> Thanks for setting that up, Madison. <laughs> um, so my, my presentation is about the movement of intentionality. Um, and I will try to keep it to 20 minutes, but like honestly, I could talk about this forever. Um, it's such an interesting thought to me in terms of movement uh, because, next slide. Um, movement is something that's happening all around us. Um, we don't choose for it to happen. We can't stop it from happening. However, um, it's there. And we can choose whether or not movement is happening to us or for us by being intentional about how we either react to that movement or interact with that movement. Um, so, you know, first um, evidence of my whole grace. Um, change is inevitable, growth is intentional, and that's just like an internet quote, but I love it. <laughs> and, I, and I feel that it's so true. Um, next. Next slide. Um, so a little bit about myself. Some of you may know me as Ava and Ian Andrews' mom. You know, if you're in the children's ministry, that's my little correlation there. Um, and about two years ago, um, the three of us went through something really, really hard and unimaginable and heartbreaking. Um, on December 23rd of 2016, I lost my husband in a car accident. And at that time, my son was two and a half and my daughter was eight. So um, some of you were in my living room on Christmas Eve um, praying with me, praying for me. At that time, I didn't even know to pray. I was just stunned and in shock. Um, but, you know, you all came to me and have journeyed with me through this, um, this really, really, you know, tragic thing where I, I kind of titled this Falling Still. Um, it's kind of like, I don't know if any of you saw the movie Get Out, but when, okay, yes, when you're in, what is it called? The sinking place, sunken place? Yeah, and you're just like, you're falling, but there's no bottom, and you're like, am I still, am I floating, am I moving? I don't know. Um, that is very much what this experience felt like. Um, and the only thing that, uh, that kind of, you know, really started to give me comfort, I'm a person of, of music, and hence you'll see some Bible verses sprinkled throughout here, but mainly you'll see song verses. Um, one of my favorite songs by Canton Jones, Fill Me Up Again, which um, Stephen Maxwell actually sang at the memorial service. I cannot move on without you. Do like you did way back when. I need you, Lord, right now. Fill me up again. Um, and I really feel like that is just like encompassing of my story. Um, so next slide. Um, so obligatory um, Bible verse. So hopefully you're feeling a little comfortable. I, I did some research. Um, <laughs> Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come onto you to test you as though something strange were happening to you, but rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. I can accept that verse now, but at that moment, I thought, but I don't want your glory to be revealed. I want your glory as I had it. Your glory was just fine when my family was intact. Can we bring that back? Um, I, I don't really want to see what's coming next because that was pretty terrible. Um, and I think it's just one of those things that it kind of reminds you, this world is full of sin and bad things will happen whether you are good or not, whether you're a believer or not. And what we have to do is lean into God to get us through those times and understand we're not exempt from pain. He never said this life would not have it. In fact, he kind of guarantees it in the Bible <laughs> that this life will be full of pain. 
um, which is why you are to look to his glory and what's coming next, what's coming after. Next. Maybe I can just do a little beep. Um, and so a verse that I actually do find um, comfort in now uh, from Joshua 1.9, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord, your God, will be with you wherever you go. Man, I, like, I have lived this throughout this whole change in life. Throughout, I will say throughout this whole recovery that I'm going through, um, being able to let God lead me, let him go before me, recognize where he's pushing me towards and follow him there. Um, I think when something like this happens, you almost have no choice but to just let God do his thing. You're so desperate for um, companionship. You're so desperate for understanding. You're so desperate for hope that the only way that I know how to move when life stops you is to recognize God's movement in my own life. To understand that <laughs> when, when I felt that the world had kept going and my life was so broken that it had just stopped in its tracks and I didn't know how to move forward, God had already gone ahead and had prepared the rest of my life for me. And by seeing his movement, like me and God became besties. Um, I was able to know him in a way that I never knew him before. Even growing up in the church, um, I have this really deep understanding and connection with God that I never knew was possible. And so by, um, by building this relationship with God, I, <laughs> um, I really <laughs> got to understand how intentional he is and the fact that, um, thanks, um, how intentional he is and that being in his midst is exactly where I need it to be. Um, so I, I pulled out a verse from um, Intentional by um, Travis Green. I know that all things are working for my good. He's intentional, never failing. Um, so I wanna share three things with you that I learned about our intentional God. The first thing being that he is a preparer. Um, in Deuteronomy, it says, do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord will personally go ahead of you. He will be with you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. In 2016, before my husband passed, from the month of June through October, three of my really good friends from college moved to Atlanta. And I, like, that's not a coinky dink. Like, Jesus was absolutely just bringing people around me to surround me because he knew what was happening. He knew what was coming. And to bring those close friends that were like family into my life at that time so they could be near. Even the fact, like I, I have to say this, one of my friends moved to Atlanta without a job, just came here and said, I'm gonna find something, I'm gonna figure something out. And she was jobless until we were sitting in the car in uh, the, the parking lot of Publix one morning. And I said, you know, Annie, I, I think next week, I'll be ready to go back to work. She gets an email with a job offer for that following week to start. And it's just like, not only had God blessed me, but he had blessed her for her faithfulness to be there with me every day, to come to Atlanta without promise of a job. But she, she had done her job for God. And he said, okay, I'm releasing you from this responsibility. You've done your job with Ashley, now go work. That's like such a testimony to me that we would be sitting together and be able to see God working in both of our lives. Um, I think he prepared us by even having me and Mario be a part of North Atlanta. Um, we came here right after I graduated from college um, and we, we had started dating in college. We were college sweethearts, got married shortly after. Um, and we came to this church in the summer of 2007 
And so being able to even build relationships with people here, so that way, you know, when that happened, uh, you knew where I lived, <laughs> you knew who we were, you knew my children, you came and you were able to sit with us um, in a way that is uncommon because those relationships had already been formed. They weren't formed out of tragedy, they were formed before, so when the tragedy hit, um, you could really be there to support. The second thing that I learned about God, man, he is productive. <laughs> like, the, uh, I'll, I'll read this verse first. <laughs> the Lord, your God, is in your midst. Um, a nightly one, I'm sorry, a mighty one, who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you um, with his love. He will, uh, he will reign over you with loud singing. Um, God provided things that I didn't even know I needed. Um, I have a full-size freezer in my garage because Casey and Brad knew that, you know, church folks, they, they bring the casseroles. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no way my standard size refrigerator was going to hold all of that, nor could we eat that much that fast. So, so uh, I mean, he, he brought people who I looked up, Ian was bathed and fed, because to be honest, at that time, I was so, everything was so dark for me. I was so sad, so depressed. I mean, I wasn't even bathing myself, let alone my two-year-old. And he, he sent this army of people who just knew what to do. Um, you know, Stephanie Viverberg was like, hey, do you need a housekeeper? Hey, do you need these holes patched on the side of your house from that annoying woodpecker who keeps eating at it? Yes, I do. But I didn't know that. Um, and so just to see how productive God is to prepare and to bring people and um, just bring people in your life that you don't even know to ask for um, is just something that's so amazing about him. And uh, the last thing that I learned is that he is preferential. So insert Drake verse. <laughs> I want to thank God for working way harder than Satan. He's playing favorites. It feels amazing. I hate to break it to you guys. I'm one of God's favorites. Like, <laughs> God has been with me in a way that I can't even describe. Like, I've never felt so much movement in my life. I've never been able to literally feel the presence of God everywhere I am, every single second of the day. And like I said, I have two kids, and to see him just like, hyper-focused on them as well. I, Ian just turned four, and some of the things that comes out of this child's mouth, in a good way, <laughs> um, I'm just like, God is working on you. How is he working on me, and working on you, and working on Ava? Like, how are we functioning right now? Um, I don't know how he does it, but I definitely feel highly favored um, I definitely feel like he's being very intentional about what he's doing in my life and what he's preparing me for next. And so when God is that intentional, it really forces you to be intentional yourself and start to think, if God is paying this much attention to me, then there's something I'm supposed to be doing with my life. There is something that like I need to do to help God, prepare me for whatever it is that's next. And honestly, you have to be intentional about living life after something like that happens, right? Like when you're going through that recovery stage of whatever it is that is holding you down, whatever it is that is just bringing that dark cloud over your life, you have to be intentional about continuing to let some sort of light shine through you. And so the first thing that I learned about myself is that I need it to be understood. Um, when you go through a tragedy of, of any kind, something that's just like so big that it just breaks you and you don't know how to pick up the pieces, um, being understood 
it for me was one of the things that really helped me in my recovery process. And what I mean by being understood was for people to have empathy and not sympathy. Um, we don't all have to go through the same thing for us to really feel each other and to really be with each other and understand each other. Um, but what, what I needed was one permission to be able to say how I felt and to not be judged for that, to be able to say, you know, today doesn't feel like a day that I want to go on and for that to be okay. Um, I, I really just needed that really deep love from God. And um, sometimes that's just in someone sitting with you while you cry. Sometimes that's just someone sitting with you while you're sitting in silence. And sometimes that's someone talking with you just so you don't feel so alone because the dynamic of your household has changed. Um, if you know Charity Naibo, you know that she will hug all of the emotion out of you. <laughs> she's like, she's, you know, one of those empathy huggers. Um, and it got to the point where we had to, you know, have a discussion and I had to tell her, you know, sometimes I can't take your hugs because I don't want to cry. And I just need you to understand that. Like, you know, just when you're approaching, let's just make eye contact so you know. <laughs> if this is a hug day or not. <laughs> I think it worked out well. Um, the second thing that I learned about myself was that I needed normalcy. Um, when you go through counseling, which I am such a big proponent of, um, you know, they talk about like the new normal. And I used to hate that term. I was like, stop saying that. I don't want this new normal. I want my old normal. Can I get that back? I'll trade. Is that cool? No? Okay, fine. I'll make a new normal. My new normal, though, is really weird for other people. And that's okay, because it's not about you. <laughs> um, you know, my new normal is I found this really great podcast um, that was prepared by Nora Borealis, who's wearing that still kicking shirt, which I'm wearing today. Um, called terrible, thanks for asking. Because when people ask you how you're doing, you wanna say I'm good. But through counseling, I learned, it's okay to say I'm doing terrible today. Yeah, yeah. And like, we should all just feel okay to be that open and honest with each other. And unfortunately, it took a tragedy for me to learn that. So I'm just gonna tell you before if some tragedy happens to you, tell people when you're not feeling okay, it's fine. Um, but like, th this still kicking t-shirt, that's my new normal. I'm not 100%. I don't know that I will ever be 100% because things are so weird now. I didn't think I was going to lose my husband at 32. Like, what, what do you do with life after that? So my new normal might be 95%, but I'm still kicking. I'm still here. I'm still living life. And, and that's good. And the third thing that I learned about myself was that I needed to move. God had literally kicked down walls, lit up shadows. He left the 99 for me. I needed to move to meet God where he was. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Not only did I need to move to meet God, I've got two little people at home. They need to see me move. I need to be an example to them of how to continue to engage in life, how to continue to be present in life and be thankful throughout tragedy. Um, so learning how to move in this new way um, has been just really, I can't even describe it. It's just been, it's been amazing to like kind of figure out who I am and how I need to move with God to keep building this relationship that we have. Um, and so this is a, a quote from a, a pastor who I, like, I just find that it to be so true. Often we endure trials seeking God's deliverance from them. While our instinct is to flee trials, remember that even in the midst of suffering, 
God's will is being done. So even in the midst of whatever suffering we're all going through right now, no matter how different it is, we can't compare levels saying that one person's suffering is greater or harder than any of the others. We're all going through things because life is not easy. We're all just struggling with things. Like Angie said, we're all in recovery for different reasons. Um, and just hold on to the fact that God's will is being done in the midst of that. Um, I think for me, because I was so desperate and so hopeless, I was just looking for God's movement. I was like, God, show me anything. You're out there. You're right here. You're over there, right? You're everywhere. Just move with me. Um, I just want to encourage you that God's will is being done in your life. And um, leave you with this verse from Jeremiah. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil to give you a future and a hope. So when you're feeling like things are hopeless, you're feeling like you can't move, just keep moving with God. Know that he is right there leading you. Know that he is beside you when you need it because he's already gone ahead to prepare for you. And he's just come back to give you that comfort to keep moving. Thank you. Thank you.